Next question is from Fabris2. What do you think of straps and grips? I've used them for years, but wonder if I should just build my forearm strength and only lift what I can without them. All right, so this depends who I'm talking to. If you are going to compete in a sport that allows you to use straps, like you're a strongman, and strongmen oftentimes will do like these crazy lifts and the competition will allow for straps, then I'd say you can use them, obviously, because you need to get good at using them. But for the average person, this is my advice. If you can't hold the weight, that means you can't lift it. Mm -hmm. That's all. So if you can't hold it, then that's your weakest link, and that means you can't lift it. And so people will say to me, well, then that's because my back is too strong. Right. My back's too strong for my hands. Okay, our hands are freaking – we evolved to have really strong hands. I mean, we were, were primates, for, for goodness sakes. If you allow your hands to get stronger, believe me, they will be strong enough to support – 99% of the people who are listening right now. Now, in the extreme cases where you're like superpower, uh, incredible strength or whatever, maybe. Yeah. But, I mean, I've pulled 600 pounds, bare hands. Uh, power lifters aren't allowed to use wrist straps. They use alternate grips or hook grips, and they can do it. I say let your hands get strong. I don't know why we're so afraid of this. Yeah, I don't know. I Again, I'm probably the most extreme on this. I don't know when it happened. I think it was after training for football for so long uh, and, you know, like trying to get numbers and trying to get, uh, you know, PRs and things to put on the board and be like the strongest guy in the gym and all this. And that meant a lot to me. And I would use a belt and I would use wrist wraps, you know, for pulls. And uh, at some point, like – I went to go grip just, you know, like maybe half the weight, like in dumbbells, and I could barely even hold on to it for very long. I had no endurance. I had no grip strength. And then just started to work on that specifically and just basically made it so no aids were at all involved in any one of my lifts. No no belts, no straps, no special shoes, uh, no shirts, no, none of that stuff. Like what I'm doing is eliminating, uh, you know, a, a component of training that now I don't have to really focus on as much. But I'm, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm really in a sense, I'm just being lazy. Like to, to, at the end of the day, I'm cutting out a portion of of important things to work on that my body's sending me feedback and signal on that I'm being arrogant and I'm and I'm avoiding it because I think that this stuff is more fun and cool and is gonna fucking make me look cool on Instagram uh, and I'm gonna get numbers and praise for it. That's ego, you know. And so uh, I've just been challenging myself. What what am, what can I really do? You're not gonna know what you can really do unless. Uh, you address all those things that your body's telling you. So yeah. since the beginning of the podcast, uh, I've challenged this the most, right? So of the three of us, I have probably used the straps the most. Um, I don't right now uh, because the, I don't see the value in them for what where I'm currently at. Uh, where I found value in them was when I was competing. And because a lot of my training was very, very similar to like MAPS Aesthetic, where we have, you know, foundational days and then we have these focus days where I would be working on specific body parts or even like small muscles in the back, right? And I'm doing a lot of like isolation type exercises. And when I would do that after heavy deadlifting or maybe I did something the day before and my, my arms are weak or sore, and that would become a limiting factor to where that would start to give out before the muscle that I was trying to target, I would strap up. And the reason why I would is because the opposite of everything that Sal and Justin just said, I didn't care about strength. I didn't care about having you know my, my forearms matching my back strength. I cared about developing an area that I needed to work on so I could present my physique on stage. And if my forearms were the limiting factor, I don't care. I didn't care about what I should be doing for like overall functional and what makes the most sense for the average person. I cared about not letting my forearms fatigue at all while I could really focus on squeezing and pumping and driving home this muscle that I was trying to work. So I found a lot of value in using straps when training like that. So I do agree with everything that the boys are saying that if you're just a person who's trying to build strength, trying to build you know muscle, burn body fat, uh, not a lot of value there. But I do see it for somebody who is- That's the 1%. Right. Sculpting a physique mm -hmm. and has a plan going into that workout and they do not want 
the forearms to be a limiting factor. They don't give a shit if they're weaker there or not. They are targeting a specific area that they want to completely feel it there. That's different. And so I, I, I can justify somebody using that. Yeah. And that's not to say that that person still wouldn't benefit from working on forearm strength. I just didn't care. Dude, it, it took me a year. I, I used to use wrist straps all the time. And then uh, one day I said, I'm not going to use them anymore. And I could not lift yeah. what I lifted. It took me a year, but I did get back to the point where I could then go back uh, to the previous lifts. It, it took me literally a year of focus. And the, and the other thing is, like, I come from a blue-collar family. And in the summers, I would go and work with my dad. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the thing that separated the, the strong guys from the guys that couldn't handle it was hands. Yeah. The guys with the strong hands, they could carry the two-by-fours. They could swing the hammer. They could, they could throw the cement up on the wall or whatever. And the guys with the weak hands, could I don't care how big and strong their shoulders and backs and chests and everything else were, if their hands were weak, it was like, it doesn't matter. You, don't have, you can't connect to anything. It doesn't matter at all. Then when I got into judo and wrestling and jujitsu, I'm going to tell you right now, you tangle with a, a guy who's got really strong hands. You could be stronger everywhere else. Yeah. You're, it, it, you're in trouble. He's going to get a hold of you, and you know it. You feel it. They grab you. And my dad was like that. My dad came and did jujitsu at uh, almost 50, and everybody called him Iron Grip because if you got a hold of you, you're fucked. <laughs> Can you do anything because <laughs> his hands were so strong? So then I started to really value that and – I got rid of the I think you have to be back. I think you have to be honest with yourself and just, you know, if you are somebody who can't lift over, you know, 300 pounds uh, without any strap for like deadlift and then but you can do 500 and something pounds with the straps. That's a huge yeah. discrepancy yeah. from that. I was never like that. I could still over over underhand 550 and pull it up barehanded without straps. I would use it like for example, uh, one of the areas that I, I really focused on when I was competing was my rear delts. It was one of the things that separated me, I felt, mm -hmm. from a lot of my peers. I was really good at training them. And that's a the, the mechanics on a, a rear delt fly, for example, is it's really easy to allow traps or other muscles to kick in to overcompensate yeah. for the movement. And when I worked myself up to where I could, re I could control, very controlled rear delt fly with 50-pound dumbbells. Now, you do that controlled as a rear delt fly after your forearms get trashed sure. from that. And then the next thing I know, I'm, I'm fighting it with my forearms and I'm not feeling it in my rear delts. So you'd see me strap up on something like that, which is an unusual exercise to do it. But there's a, there was logic behind mm -hmm. why I was right. doing it. It wasn't an ego thing of I need to just show everybody I can do 50 pound dumbbells. No, I'd worked my, my rear delt strength up to that. But then if I got that heavy of weight to, to control that with my forearms, really, really tough. And then I would lose the purpose of why. I was doing that exercise. Right. So there's All places about the for intention. 